Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using Pactware software. And specifically in this tutorial, we will be using the Pactware software to configure the Moore Industries THZ3 and TDZ3. If you're an existing customer of Moore Industries Instruments, you'll notice that this is a bit of a departure for us because in the past, with our configurable instruments, we would have our own proprietary software to use to configure them. However, in this case, we are now moving over to the Packware software. Uh, Packware is slowly becoming an industry standard, whereas many suppliers will be using Packware to configure their instruments. So the end user only has to have one tool, which is Packware, to support the configuration of many devices. Uh, first off, let me talk a little bit about the installation. You can go to our website and download Packware. You, you can, if you already have Packware, you only need to download our DTMs. I'll be talking about the DTMs in a few moments. So, but, so if you already have Packware, it'll look just like this when you start it up. Uh, if you like, you can install Packware from our website, which will also include our DTMs in one file. Or you can download the DTMs separately if you already have Packware. So let's talk about some new vocabulary that we will be encountering when we're using Packware. First is the name Packware itself. We're not packing anything. Packware stands for Process Automation Configuration Tool. Very simple. And I mentioned a moment ago about the DTMs. In order for Packware to work, we have to supply it with the information about our instrument. And there's a small utility we develop to allow the uh, Packware to understand our instrument, and that is called the DTM, which stands for Device Type Manager. Okay. Also in our DTMs, you'll see a few uh, abbreviations you might not recognize. One is MII, which stands for More Industries International, and the lastly, MISP, which stands for More Industries Serial Protocol. And that is the protocol we use on the cable that will connect from your PC to the little three pin port on the front of your THZ3 or TDZ3, which have you. Okay, so now let's get ready to take a look at how this all works and we'll all put it together. Okay, now before we get into the nuts and bolts of Packware, just to, I want to make a quick mention of how you may have installed Packware. If you installed Packware from the More Industries website, it will install Packware plus the, the required DTMs. So they will be all ready for you and your screen will look just like it does here. However, if you're an early enabler of Packware, in other words, if you had Packware previously and you only needed to download our DTMs, then make sure you take one step here. You go to View Device Catalog and hit the update device catalog and that will bring the more industries dtms that you downloaded and installed it'll bring them into packware so don't forget to take that extra step okay so here we are with packware at its basic uh, everything that you're uh, configuring in packware comes under the heading of project and they'll all be filled in in this area here on the left uh, so we'll start with the first thing we want to make sure we uh, configure is the way we are going to connect from Packware and from my PC here to my instrument. So we'll go up and we'll say, click on device here, and we're going to add a device. And then you notice it put, presents two DTMs for us. The top one here being for heart communication. That is for uh, if you are using a heart modem, connected from your PC to the instrument. Uh, this will be the DTM that you will be using. Now this uh, DTM is good for most heart modems, but not all. We've run into cases where somebody will have a, a third party a heart modem that will not communicate. Uh, so they would have to go to the manufacturer of that heart modem and get a DTM from that manufacturer. But this uh, DTM that we provide will cover most cases. And the other DTM we have here is for the uh, More Industries International, More Industries Serial Protocol Communications DTM. And that's 
Right now I have uh, the More Industries USB cable plugged into my laptop and it's going off to my, my instrument. So that'll be the DTM that I will be selecting. So I'm going to go down here and say OK. And there it is. It pops up right there. So you can, you can right click on it from here or you can also go to Device and get the same selections as long as this line is highlighted. So I will right click on it. And one thing, first thing I want to do is change the parameter in it because I can read over here on the left it says COM1 and I know for sure on this computer it is not COM1 so I need to change the parameter. Uh, and there you even have an exclamation point here because it Peckware doesn't know if this is correct. So I will change that to the correct COM port. And you notice when I did that, we get a little pencil indication right here and that's to uh, let the user know that this change has to be written Pencil, written, get it? Has to be written to Packware. And the way we're going to do that, I'm going to go down here and hit the Apply button. Okay. Now I can go to my COM3 here, and I can say Connect. And if everything is, is working correctly, I will get a green box there. And, and if you were looking closely, I know it's small on your screen, but those the connection was made right there. Uh, actually, I'll just disconnect it. You see they break apart. And then they connect, and it is green. The green is good. Okay, now that I have that connected, I'm going to go up and select another device. And this time, I'm going to tell it what I am to have on the end of my cable here. And right now, there's three types of TDZ3, THZ3 family. There's three types of instruments. Uh, I'll put a slide up here where it'll show graphically what they look like. And there you go. The one here on the left... Uh, the tall guy with the display that's the TDZ3 the D in the middle of that means display so TDZ3 shows it there uh, in, a, in a housing and you can see out of the bottom it looks like a temperature probe coming out of the bottom now the smaller unit in the center of the photo is the THZ3 hockey puck and that little guy will go into that housing that's laying there next to it and you can see a temperature probe coming out of that as well. And the far right in the aluminum kind of rectangular case, that's the THC3 DIN mount. You can see it's on, mounted right there on about a three inch piece of DIN rail uh, as an example. So those are the three types in this family that we currently manufacture and sell. So the one I have connected to my cable will be the TDZ3 hockey puck. So I'll select that. I'll say OK. It pops up here. And first thing I want to do is I want to connect to it. So we'll hit connect. And there again, we get a green box that says go. OK, and of course, the one thing I want to do today is to set all the parameters or the configuration of the TDZ3 so it is appropriate for my application. However, we could we could just go and hit parameter, but I don't want to do that. What I want to do, and what I recommend you always do, is say load from device. And I'll click on that. We see we get some action here, and we get a progress bar on the bottom. And what we're doing here is we're taking the information, uh, the current configuration of the TDZ3, and we're uploading it into Pactware, so we know what's already been how it's already been configured so we can make any required changes all right so we'll right click on there now that we did the load from device we'll go to the parameter screen and here we have it and uh, you notice we have little plus signs over here so for the input if we hit the plus sign we're allowed to configure sensor ranging and mapping for the input we're going to do both of those we also have analog output we're going to be configuring that What's going to go on the display? We're going to configure that and also set up the heart settings. There are many other uh, configurations that we can do. There's custom calibration. We will not be covering that today. And there's also advanced setup. We will not be covering that today. Purpose here is to set up the basics so we can get our instrument running. So let's get started with the configuring of the sensors. Okay, so we'll start at the top here and we'll go to, firstly to configure sensors. And when we click on it, we see we get all the options in the right hand column over here. Uh, also, we can't quite see the whole thing. And just as any other Windows program, you can move these 
these border bars here and we can see now we got everything we need to see here okay so for my purposes uh, the input is not going to be a four wire RTD it'll be a three wire RTD and the uh, it'll be a thousand ohm 3850 RTD I'll leave it at degrees Celsius uh, with broken wire enabled and we'll leave everything else at the factory default also you might notice down here you have space where you can type in a sensor serial number so if your uh, particular sensor has a serial number you can identify it there and save that uh, okay and I'll be using two sensors in my application so you notice the default is not used so we will change that and I think I'll use a thermocouple and thermocouple with RJC which is appropriate probably for 99% of all applications uh, and I believe I have a type K thermocouple on there I will be measuring uh, in degrees Fahrenheit so we'll put that on there broken wires enabled and so forth so everything looks good there and you might have noticed as I'm changing these parameters that I get all these little pencils here that's to remind us that we have to write that to pack where when we're done with our changes okay so now that we've configured the two sensors that I have attached to my TDZ3 I will go to ranging and mapping my uh, primary variable will be sensor one I'll leave it at 0 to 100 degrees it's going to measure right now it's going to measure the ambient temperature in my in my room here and um, for the second variable though let's take a look and see what sensor 2 says the third variable I will use for absolute differential and for the fourth variable I'll use the RJC temperature so that'll give me a little variety uh, of my readings there okay now we can go to the analog output and let me see there's my input range 0 to 100 output 4 to 20 that's pretty standard for the industry so I'll leave it there um, analog under range value it'll go down to 3.8 and over range it'll go to as high as 21.6 and in fail mode it'll go to 23.6 I'll leave those at the at the default settings they seem to work okay for my application the display because uh, this unit does have a display on it uh, we'll be looking at the PV and I'll have it go to the SV I'll determine how many decimal places and I also want to look at the uh, RJC temperature and also I was using the absolute differential there it is down here so I'll take, be able to take a look at that on the display as well okay and lastly we have the heart settings uh, address zero because I have a point-to-point -point network so that would be appropriate and you can at tag numbers uh, tag names or numbers whatever you like and all these uh, descriptors or messages whatever is appropriate for your industry or your application and everything else I would just leave as is now notice I got a bunch of pencils here so I have to make sure I hit that apply and there now they're gone now in this case we have written the changes to packware however they are in packware only the TDZ3 is at the end of my cable so I have to go here and I'll have to say store to device it's an extra step because they have to go from packware to the device so we'll be sure to hit store to device there it goes it's you see the action here in the progress bar down on the bottom as all my changes are being downloaded to the device and I, oh, by the way, you also see we have a larger icon up here for the instrument that I am attached to. So make sure when you start setting your parameters that that icon looks like the instrument you have. So you're doing the doing everything correctly. Okay, here we are almost finished now. There, it's finished. Now we can go to my TDZ3 and we can say measured values. Now we'll be able to see if everything is working correctly. So we'll click on that and here's our values again we're missing some of the right hand side so I'll push this uh, line over here there those are the engineering units there and if you remember I had the PV that's my uh, three wire RTD set for uh, degree C so it's reading 22.57 status shows here is good 
Secondary variable, I had it in degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, right now it's reading 71 degrees, a little better than 71 degrees in my room. Good status. The third variable, I believe, was the absolute differential. So 0.85 degrees C difference in reading between my thermocouple and my RTD. And uh, my RJC is reading 23.72 degrees. And um, down here, my output, 7.6 milliamps right now. And uh, the percent of range, 22.58. Everything seems to be operating fine. Okay, very good. We'll shut down the that for now. Oh, by the way, you can also read the device variables down here, or the dynamic variables. Okay, we'll close that down for now. And one thing you should do now is save your configuration uh, the, of your whole entire project, because if you want to install this same setup in multiple instruments, it'll save you from having to go step by step through it. So we'll say file, and we will save as, and I'll give it a name. Let's just say test. 05 and save and you notice you had little pencils over here too that's just because you, up to now we did not save the project now the project is saved we lose the little pencils and there you have it uh, that is the basic setup for the instrument using packware so in the future and using packware uh, one thing you must remember that packware is not written by more industries it was a product of the of the Packware Consortium. We just use it for our instruments, so it's not our, our bit of work there, but we'll help you wherever we can. And in, in order to do that, you can contact us any of three ways. You can either email us directly at the ad email address you see here. You can also phone us at the number you see now and just ask for technical support, or you can go to our internet page or web page at www.miinet.com and click on support and then you'll see a eHelp logo and just click on that eHelp logo and that'll allow you to to send us uh, any information or questions that you need answered so thank you for listening and have a great day